deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. The city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there. Just around the corner, and it keeps you going. City of Dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Corner. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. If you are, make sure to smash that like button, and hopefully today will be the day I earn your subscription. There's a little red button down there as well that says subscribe. I hope you'll hit it. Now, every time a huge video game gets released, every time a new game gets announced even, there's an immediate battle two sides uh ideologically there are a lot of people that you know you would have used to call sjw's although that terminology is kind of passe now um but those type of people uh always demanding the game speaks to what they want it to speak to and they will stretch and bend and 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 and, and flip backflip to try and own the gamers to totally wreck gamers. Ha ha. Man, politics in video games. See, there's a corporation in this video game. <laughs> Take that, gamers. And these are the same people that just willfully don't understand that the section of gamers that don't want politics in their video games, that isn't, that is, we've never meant we don't want complex themes and we don't want. Uh, real world issues brought up what it's meant is we don't want lazy modern politics in particular uh, pushing an agenda crammed into the video game we want the narrative to speak for itself or to allow the player of the game to make up their own mind that's totally fine having uh, a dictator in a video game yeah that's politically inherently that's never what we've been talking about but because the people that are against or that are for that, that want to have like, a, you know, Bernie for president in the next video game, uh, they can't win that argument because then they would have to admit that it's propaganda. They always try to misrepresent it. And now Cyberpunk 2077, now that Ghost of Tsushima is out, it's basically the next big release of the year, not all the way, not till November. Uh, we found out today a little bit about Cyberpunk 2077. Pre-order details, bonuses, discounts, and more. Look, do not pre-order. I know a bunch of you did. I know I see you in my live chats when we're live streaming. I know that you like to pre-order. All right. But please don't. There is literally no benefit. All you do is open yourself up to a bad day one experience. In fact, there's a ton of value in just waiting a few weeks. Let everything get patched out and fixed. There's even more value in waiting six months when you can get the game at half price. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. I just, I would wish you wouldn't pre-order. A lot of people say, oh, CD Projekt Red earns, the, earns it. Okay, fine. It's got some strong competition, but Cyberpunk 2077 might be the biggest game of 2020. A follow-up from developer CD Projekt Red's Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Cyberpunk shifts the developer's focus from past to future, but the choice... Driven storytelling, strong characters, and evocative world building CDPR is known for all look to be intact. It also starts st uh, stars the breathtaking Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand, which is pretty cool. After a series of delays, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is currently set to release November 19th, so it'll just make the cutoff for 2020. November 19th is perfect. It can get under everybody's Christmas tree or Hanukkah, Hanukkah bush... What do you put up for Hanukkah? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. Whatever it is that your presents go under or next to or on top of, it can make it there. And that's the play, I think. Really, that's the play. People will want a next-gen console and a cop copy of Cyberpunk 2077 for Christmas. Now, when I was a kid, I never would have dreamed of as asking for a new gaming console, but... Times are different, apparently, these days. And in, in a world that's just so awful, p people have more money than ever to spend on uh, frivolity. Now, what's coming with it? Well, you get some cool pre-order bonuses. By the way, I have a lot of Cyberpunk 
uh, art behind me from Display. There's a link in the description below. Just saying. Um, they've been strong to the channel. A lot of different merchandise, a lot of different stuff. So pre-ordering Cyberpunk Standard Edition. Anyone who pre-orders Cyberpunk 27 Standard will receive the base game and any applicable pre-order bonuses. Digital content, including art book, game soundtrack, wallpapers, desktop for mobile, and Cyberpunk 2077 source books. So, really nothing. It comes with some physical goodies, such as Night City postcards, a world compendium, stickers, and a map of Night City. Okay, all right. Well, that's better. Here's what I think is really interesting. The standard edition is currently on sale for $49.95. Nani? What? Get it now. See, you can save money up front. Then, obviously, there's the Collector's Edition, which is already sold out. You get the Steel Book, the 10-inch uh, statue depicting V, the game's protagonist in action, a hardcover art book, Metal Start, Metal Pin, uh, Quadra VTech, Metal Keychain, annotated copy of Visitor's Guide to Night City, sealed in the NCPD evidence bag, embroidered patches, world compendium detailing, postcards, so it's got everything. Then you can also buy just these little collectible figures as well, which... Kind of seem cool. You've got what Johnny Silverhand, the guitar player here. You got action figures for twenty five bucks. A wide variety of stuff. But that's not what we're here for, right? We're we're here to battle for the soul of Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. That's right. It has to be political. It has to be. Uh, it has to agree with my worldview. Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven dev on BLM influences. Ours is a work of art, not. A political statement. Oh no! You know now. This article is on WCCF Tech, which, no disrespect, um, will likely be a feeder site to sites like Kotaku and Polygon, who will now politicize this non-political statement. You're going to see a lot of people in the streets crying their eyes out. The source material for Cyberpunk 2077 is known to be a critique of sorts of some issues in contemporary society, such as inequity following a wave of protests in the United States. Polish website Spider's Web asked Cyberpunk 2077 quest designer Pawel Sasko whether the BLM movement fostered any changes in the upcoming game, chiefly in its quest. Below, you can find his translated answer. Quote, the important point is that we already have a recorded game at this stage, actually for a long time. This is the last stage and we don't change anything in the story we are telling. Add nothing or remove anything. These events, as you notice yourself, took place very recently. You know what's interesting though? Uh, I'm concerned because some people are talking about um, certain things being removed from the game. The second point is for us, Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher are games that show our philosophy as a studio. The game we are working on is an entertainment medium to a large extent, but for us, it's also an art. A work that shows our vision. It is difficult for me to imagine the events that would have to happen for us suddenly to find that we are changing or moving something in order to not touch specific elements. Anyway, I think you saw elements in the game that touch it, so you could find out for yourself. For me, the most important thing is that our game is not a political statement, a political thesis. For me and my team, Cyberpunk 2077 is a work of art, and I always stick to it. I always say to my designers, I don't feel like I'm producing something. I feel more like I'm painting a picture or making music, stories, or movies. This is art for me, and the art stories we tell the player. This is the most important thing for us. Uh-oh! Blue hairs on self-deletion watch. There's no possible way that they could accept this answer. As a studio, we are more such an amalgam of different people. We have different approaches to political, religious, spiritual, and internal life. Also, when it comes to orientations or political sympathies. As a studio, we try to cultivate openness and approach it in such a way that everyone can have a say and that each of these shades can be represented. As long as it is, of course, within law and reason. So that each player can find something for everyone and find answers to their own questions. Imagine that! I wonder why nobody's covering this. I wonder why Polygon hasn't put out an article. I suppose when Polygon does put out an article on it, they'll be extraordinarily upset about the fact. They will rage that the game is so is too political. Uh, we don't believe you. 
we, 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 whatever they're saying can't possibly be the truth. Uh, we know the truth. We are Polygon. We are Kotaku. We are blue haired Twitter who don't have enough money to buy the game anyway, but we'll spend uh, our days and nights endlessly critiquing it, demanding that the game bend to our will anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077, but I'm not looking past Gross of Tsushima. I'm not looking past my day, uh, catalog. And you know what? If I'm not ready to play it on day one, that's okay. I'll live, and you will too. Remember, there'll be deals after Christmas, absolutely. And there'll be deals at Christmas for games like Ghost of Tsushima, which will probably be on sale by then. So spend your money wisely, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon. <laughs>